Alright, what's up everybody? I know it's been a long time since I've done a LEGO review. We're finally back at it again, and in this video we are looking at this LEGO idea set, which came out around February 16th, but uh, it took me quite a while to get it. This is called the Medieval Blacksmith House. It is basically, yeah, Medieval Blacksmith House. That's literally what it is. So I'm a little bit, I apologize in advance for you know, doing this a little bit late, it's already like almost March and only now I'm doing this set. Well, I had a busy life, alright? So, here we go. Let's uh, look at the sets. Alright, let's look at the main house itself. Um, one of the first things I want to mention when looking at the set is particularly the outside. And just, I love the color scheme. You get a nice picture of blue sand green gray it's just it seems like it was just slapped onto the side of a mountain top and i think that does it really really well i mean this takes place like in the old european days so the design is very very old and antique and uh yeah so um i guess we'll start off with the little side part here which is you got this nice apple tree going on here um, honestly, Apple Tree is a really good design. Like, I love how it's built. It's, they use this big trunk and they like split it off with smaller different branches with the apples dangling. Ah, this is this is great. I think this design in particular, Lego has done a pretty good job with this with this Apple Tree here. Now another thing is on the other side of the Apple Tree, you can see there's a little targeting board for the archer to practice some archery as target practice or you know shoot an apple down if they want <laughs> down here there's also a little well where you know you can get your water from here not quite sure why this there's this random little like stem just sticking out and wrapping around the well uh actually well, you can't even see it right here yeah this one i'm not quite sure why that's a thing but Mm, oh well, I guess it's part of, I guess it's a decaying root or something. But yeah, the well is uh, very simple, but it's done pretty nice. Below here you can see there is some um, fire logs or some freshly chopped logs hidden in the back. I guess that's stored for the, uh, the fireplace within the house. And yeah, it's pretty nice. And not much going on for the side here other than this is the main stairway that goes up to the main entrance of the house. Now you may be wondering, is this house modular? Of course it is, but we're going to look at the outside first and then we're going to dissect it little by little. On the front here we've got a nice blacksmith area where the blacksmith can be uh, forging some weapons. So we've got a nice sign up here, I guess this is to indicate that this is a blacksmith post. And then this is where all the, oh yeah, and the roof. I love how they use the... Um, Nexo Knight shields to formulate the roof and I think that's a great usage of that piece So that is that is home. I guess it's also homage to Nexo Knight, you know since the theme is no longer a thing So coming out here. We got the main fireplace where you melt the the Weapons this is where there's a sword inside. There's lots of space inside here Because you can also um, access the uh, fireplace from the inside of the house as well so it's a double Two and two sided place. Um, then you've also got the main uh, anvil here, where you like you know uh, pound the sword after it's heated and forge it together. And then on the side you get this little bucket of some uh, source cooling inside the waters, where you dip them after you know they've been through some intense heat. On this side you got this little um, exhaust thrust, and if you don't know what this is, basically in the old days this is what you do to um, to pump the uh, charcoal or uh, carbon dioxide into the flames of the furnace so that it will engulf the flames and for and help 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 melt the or help forge the sword or any weapon even better what's um special about this one though is that not only does that yes it's realistic and this is how you pump the gas but it's also a trigger for a light brick there is a light brick in the set yep so when you press on this you can see inside the uh, furnace, the light brick is lighting up, and that creates a fire uh, illumination. So look at that. So you can actually 
make it look realistic and pretend this thing is actually lighting up that furnace. And I think that's really good. That's a great installation of the light brick. It doesn't, you don't actually see the light brick. It's completely hidden. It just, it's, illu it's illuminating through all those transparent uh, bricks happening inside the furnace there. So look at that. So very, very nice usage of the light brick right there. Um, and then you got the doorway into the basement of the house. We'll look at the inside in a second. Turning this around now, you got some nice window builds. You look at this design. Mmm, solid. You've also got uh, some pumpkins growing here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the intent of that is. There's a minifigure head. I guess that's like a developing pumpkin, not fully developed. So there's that. And then coming back around the back, nothing much here. I do like this little, like this wall design here. They've done with the with the with the flat tiles here. That's really nice. Done a really good job. And then we come back to the apple tree, which we have seen already. And now, looking at the roof of the house, one of the things I really like about this house is this roof. Again, using Nexo Knight shields and. It's just a great homage to Nexo Knights. I also love how you have this little part here sticking out. Really helping with the details. The details are so great in this set. Also, this is the chimney for you know for the for the heat inside the furnace. So that's also pretty nice. You have a not it's a weaker design up here, but they've done they it still produces. So now it is time to actually uh, take apart this house and we can actually look at inside. So starting off, you remove the roof part right here. There you go. So this whole piece just comes off just like that. So now you can actually see the, ins the complete first level or second level of the house, which is perfect. This is also minifig accessible. You can also um, Stick your hand right in and get it and, and have there's plenty of uh, play space going on here So that's pretty good. So we're gonna move this up now, and I'm gonna zoom in To the level and see what we've got so first and foremost one of the most creative things is the Continuation of the furnace of the this you know how it connects from the uh, first level and the flames just continue up here And this also creates a nice little fireplace, you know back then in those days uh, electric heating wasn't a thing, so they relied on straight up fire to keep warm during the cold seasons, and they've done right there. So it's a good, it's a multi usage of the furnace, and that is very, very smart. And then we got a little writing table here, you know, back in the old days, people would write with uh, feathers and ink. You got a fet right there, there's a, there's a tile piece right there. Not, uh, what does this say? Oh, once upon a time, that's what it is. And they got a little candle over there. And this little hole that you see here, I know you can't see quite well. This is a hole right here. That's the stairway that goes right down to the uh, bottom levels of the house. And I guess another thing I want to say is the, um, the overall uh, pillar here. Makes the uh, interior design look pretty good. Also, the floor mat here is like a dragon or some creature of some sort that is a that is some cool not quite, i still don't know what the creature is but that's still a pretty cool mat design for sure and the back here you got a little chest inside there's a book and a backpack and some other gear and then finally on this side you got a bed just a pink or not pink just not pink at all a green bed and you can fit, I'm pretty sure you can fit at least one, two minifigs. But obviously you can fit one, but I'm pretty sure you can fit two. So, there is that. So that is it for the uh, first level. So now let's uh, remove this. Yes, it's modular, like I said. So, remove that. And now we can, ha we have access to the uh, bottles. But first, um, I think you can also put this back if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. And then I'll put it back put it back after so there is that okay now let's uh, move in closer and take a much deeper look into what is here all right so inside we've got this is like the main because this is kind of the main level because the uh, blacksmith area is kind of like the basement so this is the main level of the house as you can see in here we've got 
uh, preparing a little kitchen here. You got a little board here. Oh, let's see. We got some carrots being chopped right there. We've got a butcher's knife, a pan at the back. Aha, another usage of the furnace for the stove, for cooking the food. See, this is exactly what I mean by using, utilizing this uh, this furnace into th all different levels of the house. So that is great utilization. I know you can't quite see the stuff in there quite well, but there's a, a saucepan, there's a pot here hanging over the stove being cooked, and there's some fire inside there. I know you can't see it quite well, but if I see it, I think I can, you can see if I light it up. Hang on. Oh no, you can't. No, you can't. You can only see it on the you can see it on the first level. Okay. And then I'm not quite sure what this is. I think this is a trash can or some sort. And then you got a little um, staircase that goes down here. Um, and then you got the main dining table with a chicken leg right there. This chicken leg piece has been around for the longest of time, so it's nothing new. Some wine cups here. I think that's like a salad being prepared. Chairs are pretty nice here, and I love how they use the axis here. They use axis. That's right. If I can turn this around, here's a better angle. They use axis for the chair design here, and I think that is super, super creative. Never thought they, they, they like you'll use that piece for that purpose. And then finally, um, front door. Open that. Take it inside there. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, main level of the house. Like I said, one of my favorite, absolute favorite things about this is the usage of the axis for the uh, for the chairs. So I think that is that is uh, definitely a really creative thing, and uh, they should continue doing more uh, builds with this kind of design. You know, you can do a couch for all I know. All right, time to look at the last level of the house. So let's uh, remove this part. This is kind of like the quote-unquote basement of the house. So, let's look at that. So I think now I can actually um, just pick this up and show you, just like this, instead of turning the camera. So, uh, this is the armory. Yeah. So, there is uh, quite a lot going on in here. And of course, it's during the medieval times, so lots of armor is produced. So this is what I mean. This is where you can access the uh, furnace from the inside of the house. So if I do this, light up the light brick from here, of course. Look at that, so the two-way furnace. That means the blacksmith not only can he work from the outside, he can also work from the inside. He can just stand right here. You guys have a pie of coal here. Very important to keep a furnace going is the coal. And um, so yeah, you can forge. So if it's too cold, he doesn't want to be outside, then he can be working inside because there's also another anvil here and I think that orange piece is a piece of metal currently just freshly heated and is currently about to pound it or something like that um, and then you got a grindstone I think that's called a grindstone right here this is again to sharpen the blade of a sword or any other weapon shield up here you got some uh, harnesses being being forged already and hanging up I guess to cool down or something like that and you get more coal stored at the back so this guy has, this blacksmith uses a lot of coal to forge their weapons, believe me. Um, and then on the back you got a helmet, I think just freshly forged. You got a pot, you got a pan. And here, I think this is just rods, just straight up rods, nothing happening there. And then, uh, this is the hammer to, you know, hammer the stuff. And of course, it's gonna get messy, so there's no janitors back then, so he has to clean his own. You got a nice big broom here, and then the shovel. Or a dustpan, so that. So uh, definitely the uh, blacksmith here is. The, oops, I just knocked all these swords over. Definitely the uh, blacksmith here is the most like a lot of most of the things going on is all here. So open the door, boom, there you go. The door design though is really nice. I gotta give props to the door. It looks really nice. And then of course this is where you can see the stairway going up to the uh, main level of the house. So there's that looking absolutely great and no you can't access the fire locks from the inside here it's outside storage so personally of course this is my favorite level of the entire house but the other levels of the house are still pretty good ones as well honestly this house is great it's very underrated and i think 
definitely deserves more attention. I guess one more thing I gotta show here is the uh, what this looks like on the side, because it's all covered by these wooden beams, and then you get the main door right there with a the lantern right there. So, again, nice design, which is definitely overlooked from time to time. So, I think this house deserves more attention, especially after seeing the different levels and everything. Yeah, it definitely deserves way more attention. So, there's that. So, let's slap this back on, um, and then we slap the final part here, final right the roof area. Oh wait, I think this is from the back. Yep. Do that. Love how it, all the fur love how the furnace connects all together to towards the chimney. This is this is great. So there is that. actually I think I think I'm just I think I'm sticking this out. Yeah, there we go. Alright. And then finally since we put the roof right back on just like that, and there you go. There, your house is restored back to normal, and that is it for the main house. But there's side builds and minifigures, so let's look at that. Okay, so the side builds here, we got this little horse carriage here. Um, we'll take a deeper look at the horse in a second, but I just want to show you the um, the main cart. So, you get a nice, uh, it's a pretty relatively big cart, it's one of those one uh, one of those ones that you put stuff in the back and then you get the main um, person will sit up in the front here and uh, control the horse. And yeah, it is attached in a ball socket so this thing is, can be removed just like that. Um, do not pop off <laughs> the other pieces like what I just did here. Um, where did that piece go? What the heck? Oh, right here. It's right here. Yeah, so there's that. Um, what I do like though what I will say, um, they've done, they've done a pretty, uh, sick, oh wait, I just realized I put wrong. They've done a pretty good job with, uh, utilizing the horse and giving you the flexibility to do what you want with it. So, for example, this cart can, it can be held all its, on its own. You don't need, necessarily need the horse to be attached to it. But, um, yeah, it's just a nice little side build there. Inside is a little sack. I got, I guess the shield emblems, you got a little lantern here of course for the lighting purposes. Especially if you're traveling at night. Um, and yeah, you can uh, definitely fit some minifigures in here, that's for sure. And of course, this is the horse itself, and you can see it's, he is attached to the uh, car with these reins here. But we're going to actually remove him. I uh, will say though, these pieces keep flying right off every time I do that, and it gets quite annoying. So do take that in caution. So yeah, basically this this can come off as a piece of its own. And yeah, so we're gonna put the cart aside. We're now gonna look at just the horse itself and then the other animal including the set is this little doggo. Now, as I've taken off the reins off the horse, you may be thinking, oh man, he looks terrible with that gap underneath, uh, like in the middle. Well, the horse design has always been a in the same mold. I think Lego's been keeping this mold for quite some time now. Um, so basically what you can do to fix that, well number one, if you want a minifigure to be riding it, this is your chance to stick a minifigure inside this slot here. So the... Ah, what the heck? Ah, oh, he just fell over. Hey, there you go. There we go. So yeah, as you can get a minifigure to ride the horse, or, if you just want the horse to run wild and be be a free animal on its own, Lego does include this little build here, and you can just stick that in here. And then, there you go, that completes the little gap in between, and the horse actually looks completed. So, one, definitely, I am a sucker for Lego animals, and every time I see a set that's a Lego animal, I focus on the animal instead. And so, yeah, the horse is really nice, love the the uh, color scheme they went with here and posability wise you can uh, move this up it kind of creates a running function or like a, you know uh, kind of like when, so when the horses stand on their feet like that as they prepare to gallop you can move the uh, head down so if he's feasting on some hay or drinking water you can do just that um, so yeah and he, the, po the playability poses have always been the same for these horses, and yeah, it's, it's fine. I actually never had a horse before, so this is a this is a nice addition. And then the other 
uh, animal is this little doggo. This little dog. It is the same husky design as we've gotten from Ninjago City Gardens and all the other Lego Arctic sets. So personally, this is nothing new to me. And I don't really see this as appropriate for this type of set. Especially with this color scheme. I think it, they can include the same mold, but a different type of color scheme for the for this little doggo here. So, of course, horse and doggy, best animals, and uh, great to see them appear in the set. Here are the two knights in this set. You get an old knight, and then you get a, a well, old guy knight, and then you get a lady knight. Um, it's been a while since Lego actually did minifigures on knights, so this is definitely a nice thing to see after a long time. I do love the sword here. Really nice molding going on here. And overall the printing, I feel like the printing on their torsos here are very nostalgic and intentionally trying to give you that nostalgic feeling to the good old days of LEGO. So definitely I think that is done pretty well. Um, his face, very nice. He got the hair. He has no uh, double face, but you can if you want take off the hair and they give you these uh, helmets. You can just slap that on him and you can uh, lead a crusade if you want. I uh, really love the uh, shoulder armor here, definitely really, really nice. And I think he just looks cool with the helmet on. Here's the other knight, it's a lady knight. She's holding a harp a spear axe. Jesus, that is a, that's one heck of a weapon. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, she's got, okay, so this guy's got the one-sided harness and then she's got like the more even shoulder armor harness. So there's that. Um, Wing a bandana, no secondary face. This is her hair. Uh, again, I think the printing is, yeah, the printing is exactly the same as the other knight. And of course, just like the other one, Lego gives you a helmet, which you can put right on. And there you go. That's what these two look like when they're wearing their helmets. And yeah, glad to see Lego has that flexibility where you can take the hair or the helmet. Definitely these knights are really cool. If only we had just a couple more, you know, given that this is a medieval house, we could have gotten just a little more. So that's it for them. And finally, the last two minifigures, we got the archer here. Um, very nice with the bow, got the hair, got the quiver at the, or quiver at the back. Ah, she has two faces. Very nice. Uh, she's less armored for sure. I mean, she's an archer, so she's not really on the front lines of combat. So, but honestly, I'm not too much of a fan of this figure in particular. I don't know, just something didn't fit well with me for it. And here is the blacksmith. What a beard. This blacksmith has a big beard. Christ almighty. Yes, this is, this is the same print we've seen for Lego City minifigures, so I haven't really seen what it looks like underneath. But he has so much hair and a beard. <laughs> oh, that's, that's insane. They've, he's got the hammer, he's got his uh, uh, apron, and so yeah, these two obviously aren't cooler, but the blacksmith looks more like a dwarf from like Lord of the Rings. Gimli, is that you? <laughs> so I don't know. Um, definitely my favorite ones have to be the knights, but from these two, the uh, blacksmith definitely hits the sweet spot right there. So. That is it for the minifigures. Let us wrap up this review with the final verdict. Okay, here is the uh, box. My brain just completely farted for a second. It's a 18 plus set once again. So, well, it's now branded as 18 plus. So the packaging is gonna be this black box from now on. So honestly, this is one of the sets that I feel is appropriate to be an 18 plus set. So I think Definitely this deserves the 18 plus recognition and yeah, so set 21325 with 2,164 pieces. Batteries are included for the light brick of course. And then um, on the back, you got a pretty nice setup of uh, showing you all your stuff you can do in the sets and the different scenarios and the dimensions and then the lego ideas stuff and what you can do with it and then up here you just get a little look at all the uh, minifigures and animals included in the set which we've looked at earlier so that is it for this 18 plus box which has a mega reflection because of my studio lights <laughs> so is this a good set 
Yes, yes it is. The price you pay is a little bit on the higher side, but I think this would definitely look nice as a little collector's. Um, there's no any like particular theme to it, but I think genuinely this would be a pretty fun playset as well. Um, mini figures are good, good to see some uh, knights return. The horse is a great thing, you know I'm a sucker for Lego animals, so this is definitely a very, very nice addition. And overall the house design just looks absolutely great and I uh, kind of wish it was a little bigger but it, you know what, it, LEGO did their best and I think they've done a very good job here and I think, what more can I say? So my final grade for this set, i um, thinking I'm probably going to be a um, 9 out of 10 and yeah, definitely not a bad set whatsoever. So. Again, that is it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And that is it for this one, and I will see you all in another LEGO video coming your way very, very soon. We'll talk to you again later. Bye for now.